The fact that China's going old school nuclear in new ways is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. Nuclear energy comes with great potential and a lot of problems. It provides abundant greenhouse gasless energy, but they can also produce long-term radioactive waste and has the potential to have catastrophic meltdowns that can decimate an area for decades. And sadly, because of a few high profile accidents, most notably Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, and most recently Fukushima, nuclear energy, despite how safe it has become, has fallen out of favor with much of the public and policymakers. Couple that with the fact that many countries that would like to pursue nuclear energy are restricted from doing so because of its potential to make nuclear weapons. Because of these obstacles and others like the cost to build and maintain these plants, most countries have moved away from expanding their nuclear energy programs. But not China, who continues to show us up and fucking everything lately. See, one of the things that makes nuclear power plants so problematic isn't the radioactive fuel that powers them, but the water that is used to cool them. See, these power plants get hot, and if they get too hot, they melt down, and that's... A problem. So to prevent that problem, they need to be cooled, and they are cooled with water. However, water has a problem. When it gets hot, it turns to steam. And steam does not do a good job of cooling things. And, and if you don't do a good job of cooling a nuclear reactor, it melts down. And then we have the problem that we were talking about before. So to prevent the water from turning into steam and having a meltdown, it has to be kept under pretty immense pressure that keeps it in liquid form. But the problem with keeping something under pressure is that if something breaks, it no longer stays under pressure. I think, and I could be wrong, so don't quote me on this, but that's what happened at Fukushima after the earthquake. It couldn't keep its coolant under pressure and therefore it turned to steam and that allowed a meltdown. And then there's obviously the issue of making sure that the waste stays secure and doesn't fall into the wrong hand so it can be turned into a weapon. And well, obviously we found pretty efficient ways to prevent these problems. It'd be nice if we could circumvent them altogether. And China just took a big step forward towards doing that by looking to our past. See, well, uranium is the radioactive energy all-star that basically every reactor on the planet uses. It's not the only fissile material around. There are lots of other fissile fuels that through the 50s and 60s the United States experimented with for nuclear energy. We just settled on uranium because, you know, you can use it to make bombs, and then the United States always primary priority is how to blow shit up. And any happy side effects are secondary to that, like, you know, cleaner energy or interstates. No joke, the interstate system, well, it has nothing to do with nukes or anything I'm currently talking about. It was a defense project uh, that we just get the privilege of using. Eisenhower designed it so we could move military equipment anywhere in the country quickly and efficiently. And then he was like, in the meantime, I guess if we're not using it to actively shuffle troops and tanks around the country, people can use it too, and then they can pay to, to keep it up and maintain it. Anyway, sorry, ADHD. Nukes. Uh, so you don't have to use uranium in reactors, you can use other things, like thorium. Now thorium has some benefits. While it's still radioactive, it's less radioactive, it's safer to handle, and while it still produces radioactive waste, it can be recycled and reused as fuel, which you can also do with uranium. And whatever radioactive waste is left over doesn't last as long. And while byproducts from a thorium reactor can still be used to make weapons, it's more difficult and they're not very powerful, which basically takes away any of the incentive to try to use their waste for weapons. At that point, conventional explosives would be more practical practical and economical than trying to refine thorium waste into weapons. Which is ironically one of the reasons that we stopped using it for fuel. Thorium is also more abundant than uranium, although I've heard a little bit more costly to extract, but it certainly has some benefits if we're looking at it as an energy source, so that could be one obstacle overcome. And while we stopped focusing on thorium reactors back in the 60s, all of that research and data remained public and China picked it up. Last year they fired up a, a very small thorium reactor to start testing this stuff out again. But that's not the only, what's old is new again, nuclear fashion trend they pulled out of our archives. Because water isn't the only way to keep a nuke from losing its cool. And while some people are experimenting with new things like gases, which I assume are like refrigerants used to keep them cool, but China picking up some of our scraps again from our old thorium reactor is going with molten salt in their new research reactor. Now I will fully admit that something with molten in the title doesn't sound like it's a great thing to use for cooling, but it actually does have a few really promising properties. First of all, a reactor doesn't get hot enough to turn molten salt into steam or whatever the gas gaseous form of salt would be. So you aren't required to keep it under immense pressure like you are with water. That means that there's a lot less complicated systems that need to be operating properly to make sure that the reactor stays cool, and a lot less things that could be damaged and cause a runaway meltdown in the case of an earthquake or, or some sort of malfunction. The other big advantage here is where if water comes in contact with the stuff inside a reactor, it instantly vaporizes and turns the reactor into a bomb with a lot of radioactivity going a long ways away. Molten salt can actually be mixed with the thorium fuel, and in the case of a breach, the salt actually actually spreads out, dissipates all that heat, and freezes, stopping the reaction and preventing a meltdown. That's not the only breakthrough with this reactor either.
either because while most reactors need to be completely shut down to be refueled, this reactor is reportedly one of the first of its kind that can be refueled while running and they demonstrated that ability at the end of last month. And that is a big deal because you can't just flip a switch to start and stop a reactor. And going through the processes of starting and stopping a reactor are not only expensive and time consuming, but they come with certain amounts of risk as well. So it could be incredibly promising if you don't have to go through that process to refuel them. Well, all of this is promising for a world that desperately needs more sources of energy that won't cook us alive by dumping more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. It still has some problems from the past that need to be addressed. Most notably, salt is super corrosive. I mean, seriously, look at this shit. It's awful. And that's what happens in the winter. It's even worse when you heat it up. So unfortunately, to keep it from rusting away, it requires expensive materials and engineering and maintenance costs. And unfortunately, for technology to be adopted, it always comes down to the almighty dollar. Or yen, I suppose, in this case. But at least it is exciting to see that new research is going into old tech that just could solve some of the biggest problems facing humanity today. Even if it is coming out of China, well, we're going back to drill baby drill again. But the fact that remembering to revisit reactor research we rejected as irrelevant could rearrange the reality of how we re-energize, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.